no people thoughts thing. I think I'm having them. Uh, like right now, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what what do you do when you think you're having people thoughts? You know, I was, I, I'm sitting here thinking, am I having them? Well, I must be. And uh, how do I not? You know, I don't, I don't, like, I don't, anyways, that's the question. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's you know the ego people the world. So the only way out of the world, or you might say, the only in, way inward is. You've got to have a lot of fun, like so much fun that you you start to forget about the people thoughts, you know. And we've all had glimpses of that, you know. I mean, even when we were kids, you know, when we were like playing in the clay or, you know, we're out in the creek or we're out. You remember when, maybe like summertime when you were a kid, when you started to play and you just got into the playing and you were having so much fun playing and playing, playing. And what happened? You lost track of time, you lost track of space, and you definitely lost, lost track of the people thoughts. It was almost like, like, like an intruding thought when, when mother said, <laughs> lunch time, and you're like, it almost like it jars you, you know, when you're out there in the middle of the clay, just in the goo, all over your hands, and you're making a, a little thing out there, you know, you're just having fun in the clay or doing something in the stream, and then lunch time, it's like a striking, it's a people thought. You know, and and you notice another thing too is the more that you get into this joy and this happiness, that your appetites leave. You 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 know, when we were playing when we were kids, why is it that we could just go for so many hours without thinking of eating? Uh, we were like little mystics. You know, we're we're just into playing. We have been having so much fun playing. We can't be thinking about peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something like that. You know, it's just. It fades from awareness, so so perception is selective, and the more you get into this vibe of extending this true love, the true spirit that you are, your mind becomes riveted. It's almost like you come into like a vertical alignment of this happiness and this joy. Spirituality ultimately is fun. You know, you could retranslate the whole thing to fun if you're really having fun. I mean, truly intrinsic fun, not fun based on something of the world, but really true fun, then that will like grow in strength in your mind, and it will, it will edge out all of the people thoughts. Just like ego is edging God out, this is going to be like fun edging the people thoughts out. Because they really can't, they have no basis. You know, God didn't create them. There's, the spirit didn't say, "I wish that you would live a life of people and be people worlds and people galaxies and and have all kinds of complex relationships and complex interactions." And I thus say that there shall be marriage and divorce. I say that there shall be union and separation. I say that there will be oneness and multiplicity. You know, that's ridiculous. You know, <laughs> what does oneness have to do with multiplicity? It just, it doesn't go together. But the only way that you come into that experience is through the fun. You know, I mean, I, I feel like I look at my life as it unfolded over the years. I just kept giving more fun and more fun and even more fun and then even more fun and then even more fun. And then, as you get into the joy of that, then, you know, you, you, your mind is not focused on people. You know, even with doing this festival, it was a fun idea, really. Strawberry Fields Festival, nothing is real, nothing to get hung about, strawberry fields forever. It's a fun idea. It's a great song, it's a fun idea, and you know, really we, we weren't too concerned about how many people came, how would we finance it. You know, we had no criteria for success, which is, if you're going to stay in the fun, you really can't have any worldly criteria for anything, for success. You know, was it a success? Well, if I have fun, it's a success. You know, that's the way you have to live your life. And the more you get into this vibe of giving the joy away, you do notice that everything is taken care of. 
but it just seems to happen in unconventional ways. I mean, I can't, I have to really strain to even think of the last time that, that there was like a focus on, on people or numbers or money or those kind of things. But with the ego's world, it's like the ego is saying you got to put all of this energy on balance sheets and debits and credits and making sure that everything balances out. But we've already discussed that trust would settle every problem now. If I am just truly willing to trust the Spirit and say, I trust that everything will be taken care of, then literally it works. We have people that, are, that come here that are part of our community and they bring different things. Some people bring experience, they bring like a sense of the knowledge of how to do certain things. Some people have financial resources and some don't. Some people have debts, some people don't have debts. They have credits, you could say. <laughs> debts and credits. But the, the Spirit is orchestrating everything so that we are lifted up into a unified experience of the world. Unified perception is what it's all about. It doesn't really matter whether you seem to have money or you don't have money, or you have resources or skills and abilities, or you don't. You could have, you could be a total zero, a total zilch, a total nada, a total nothing in the world. In the, in the world's eyes, we could say, in, in the perceptions and judgments, but if you come with the spirit and the willingness of trust, then you literally have everything. The, the rest is totally immaterial, you know. If you look at the, the flowers and the trees and the plants, you know, they wouldn't be judged as, as a, good, a good catch or a something good by the world, you know, they're just, they're just flowers, they're just plants, they're just trees. And the, the idea of being stationary, it's like you look at some of these shrubs and everything, they're really not that mobile. I think in this world, some, mobile is overrated, you know. <laughs> trees are very not, not very mobile at all. They just sit in the same place, year after year, decade after decade. How are you doing? Sitting here. Still sitting here. Where you been? Nowhere. What you been up to lately? Nothing. I do a little swaying every once in a while. Come on, baby, let's do the twist. You know, it's, it, they're just not going anywhere. But that's more of a symbol of contentment. And peace of mind is contentment. You won't find anything in this world that's greater than contentment. When you have an experience of contentment, let me tell you, you have it all. Because there's not going to be any temptation for you to have something more. Contentment doesn't even know what more means. There's a part in the Course, in the Beyond All Idols section, where Jesus says, what is, he starts off the beginning of the paragraph, what is an idol? Do you think you know? An idol is for more of something. It does not matter more of what. I think those are some of the most profound lines that were ever uttered. I guess that's a, do you utter? We utter words in the Course, <laughs> utter words. It's the most profound lines ever uttered because because it's saying that if you, if you are content with what is, then you know who you are. And if you believe that you need more of something, more of anything, to be who you already are, then that's the wheel of time. That's what time is all about. It's like chasing a dream that, that goes nowhere and leads to nothing. So, if you were a cat chasing your tail, the best thing to do would be to stop and purr. <laughs> Just purr and purr and purr. Purring is contentment. When cats are purring, they're, what does it mean? They're content. And that's what we want to cultivate. So that's the quick answer. I would say have the fun. If you give yourself fully over to that, give yourself permission to really go for the fun, then that's 
That's going to be the end of the people thoughts. We're always just relating to ourself in mind. So whenever we think of people as real, then we're thinking of ourself as a person. We reinforce that construct in mind. And Jesus says in the Course, you have great difficulty of thinking of yourself as an idea. An idea and a person are two different things. Christ is an idea in the mind of God. Christ is neither male nor female. Christ doesn't live in any particular time frame. Christ doesn't have a form or take a form. Uh, it's just a perfect, pure idea. And you might say that true spirituality is starting to accept yourself as an idea instead of a person. So that's where this fun comes in. You know, of course it's going to have to be fun. Why would you leave something behind unless you found something greater, something more spectacular than the human condition? And oh, there is something more spectacular than the human condition.